Back again at NewTutor.com. Wanted to come in and do a quick video. I have a special guest. Her name is Sarah, and uh, she has a, a kind of a link and connection to the Christian pastor I've been interviewing over the last two parts, which, is, which has generated so many comments and emails and, and just you know traffic over my website and channel. Um, the Christian pastor who I've kind of had this discussion slash debate with uh, about things that are in the Bible. And so um, uh, he contacted me originally. The original email that I have from him uh, said something that he had uh, uh, questions about what I believed and what we believed uh, as people who, who believe and follow Torah uh, and, uh, and how that works. And so because I, I guess some people had left from his church. And, and uh, this is the person we're going to talk to today, Sarah, who her and her children, they left the church after uh, they discovered uh, the good news of Torah and that the Messiah was teaching Torah. And so what I want to do today is just hear her testimony, see what she has to say, and kind of use that to encourage others who may be going through the same thing out there. Uh, and then also maybe give her a chance to explain, you know, maybe she hasn't had a chance to explain to people uh, why she left. And so, Sarah, uh, I really want to thank you for coming on the channel, and uh, let's, let's just hear, you, hear your story from the beginning. Okay, I'm a little nervous, but uh, okay. So I'm from Council, Quebec. I went to David's church, uh, Council Community Baptist. I was the worship leader there. Um, I started going in November 2011. Uh, he ba baptized me last summer, and uh, I was part of the church for a while. And uh, I just felt like um, I had always read the Bible from the beginning, and a lot of Christians told me, start in Matthew or John, or they'll tell you start in the middle, but I just always read books from the beginning, so I read from the beginning, and things just didn't add up. Like, uh, I enjoyed praying with them. I love them. Um, it's just, I felt like the Father was telling me that... Uh, you know, some of the things they were telling me weren't true. And so I it all started one time I was going through a little bit of a depression. I felt like uh, an emptiness. Just like my faith, I didn't believe that that's all that, you know, faith in the Father had to offer me. I felt like there was this longing to just find truth. And I thought at first it was like I had to find my gift in the church. I had to find my place. And that's why I felt this missing part and then when I became worship leader I love to get people riled up to just sing praises to the Father and stuff and I enjoyed them they were my family but that that aching that missing was still there and I just was crying out to the Father like why do I feel like such a stain like I feel like my faith is just there's just so much missing and I just don't understand so I remember crying out the exact day last winter. Uh, sometimes we go to the beach here in winter because our dog can run around. And I sat on the life, the lifeguard like uh, bench, and I just started praying. And I had tears coming to my eyes. And I just prayed, uh, you know, Father, I don't want to be a stain. I want to love you the best way I can. And if, could you just show me the truth? And just fill up this space, this sadness that I'm feeling. I don't know why I'm feeling. And then it took tidbits here and there, um, little quotes from the Bible that were just stick in my mind, like things that the Messiah says when he first obeying the commandments. And I was like, you know, I just it just doesn't add up. And so I, the first thing that that the Father told me was he didn't want me to worship on Easter. That was the first thing. And I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> and so I did some research and found out what Easter means. And I, I, told, I told my pastor, I was like, did you know that the word Easter is like a sex god, like a pagan sex god name? Why, why, do, we, why do we say that? Like, the Messiah says he he would observe Passover, not Easter, and so I missed church that Sunday. That was the first, that was the last last time I went was actually the the time right before Easter, and so I was just like, okay, this is crazy. What do I do? 
and then I felt like he wanted me to try to do like an impromptu pass over here. <laughs> so his like they were really there. Oh, hold hold on, hold on, hold on. We're breaking up here. I'm losing you a little bit. Um, a real pass. Are you there now? Can you hear me now? Okay, I hear you. I see yeah, you now. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Now, go back. Um, we lost you a little bit there for a second. Go back and tell me what happened. You, you invited David over for Passover. What happened there? Well, like, I, I, I didn't explain to him that I was really observing it. Like, like I didn't tell them, oh, I took the unleavened bread out of the house and stuff. I was just kind of, like, touch and go. I was seeing if I could observe it. And, you know, what would happen if I did that? Oh, awesome, awesome. And so, all right, go ahead. Are you there? And, yeah, I'm here. Go ahead and continue on your story from there. Okay, okay. And so the second thing was Sabbath. Um, I, I saw it every Sabbath, the seventh day, Saturday, and I, I just had this burning question, like, why do we go to church on Sunday if he says Saturday? Like, all the churches in my area, all the ones growing up, they always meet on Sunday. But the Father clearly says, the seventh day. It's the Sabbath day. And so I researched Constantine, and I, I already knew about a lot of the pagan stuff, because my parents were Jehovah Witnesses. So, like, I had strayed, like, completely, like, going to a Baptist church, and that mind frame is just completely different and then when I when I started to study up Sabbath I did my first Sabbath and I think I ended up crying just because like uh, you know my husband didn't understand and he just he thought I was losing my mind pretty much yeah <laughs> but <laughs> at, at this point like I, I couldn't turn back I had to listen to what the father said so I made an appointment with my pastor because I really felt like the Father was saying, you know, like you're on the right path. Keep going. Keep searching. Keep praying for truth. Keep looking. Keep knocking. So I, I was just excited. I felt like I have all these revelations from, from God, and I can't wait to share them with my spiritual family. They're going to love and accept me and just open up to these things God's telling me. And I, I was just super stoked to, to tell them. Yeah, but that didn't happen, did it, though? No. I, I had a... Well, the first meeting with Dave went really good. <laughs> so the viewers yeah, are probably going... Yeah, it's a bit. All right. So, all right. So now, um, let me ask you another question. So the whole research you did, you actually didn't just... Uh, hear this from another person or from another a group of people. It's not like you're involved in some cult church. Uh, you actually did the research on your own. Oh, we just lost her. Everybody, it's Zach again, new to Torah. So we're going to, we're wait, waiting for Sarah to get back with us. Um, I, I really want to hear her testimony and hear her side of the story and hope that this can encourage others. And, you know, it gives her, like I said, a chance to be able to uh, talk to others who uh, in her church who she left who don't really understand what's going on and they're confused uh, folks the bottom line is this if you go out just use Google and search out Easter search out Christmas search out the Sunday Sabbath and um, hold on she's messaging me hello oh there you are okay good okay I don't know what happened I don't know either. It's okay. Technical difficulties. I mean, you're in Canada. I'm, you know, down in the Ozarks. So, um, okay. So, I was just telling everyone at, while we were taking a break there that people, um, you know, can do this research for themselves. You did some research. You weren't listening to a, a person or a group of people to influence you one way or the other. You actually just went and did some research because your heart, you had a heavy heart who said, hey, listen, you need to search these things out and find out truth about me. And that was the Father speaking to you. And all you got to do is go to Google and search out Easter and search out Christmas and search out uh, the, the Seventh-day Sabbath and how it was changed by Constantine. And then people can see that for themselves. But, you know, a lot of people don't want to interrupt their paradigm uh, because they, they, they enjoy that solidity, you know, that they enjoy that status quo. And if they go out and they start to wreck that,
that really plays havoc in their lives. And, you know, just like it's played havoc in your life. You know, you've turned your yeah. life upside down. Yeah. And so my, my whole point is, I guess, for people to do what, what you have done and to just go do the research, uh, you know, we live in a day and age where information is at our fingertips. We can go out and find, find research these things, and you can read your Bible, and you don't see uh, any of the disciples after the time of our Messiah's resurrection keeping Easter or keeping Christmas. They're keeping Passover, uh, Feast of Shavuot, and Tabernacles. And so that's what we try to keep. And uh, it's just people like you and me who have tried to go back to their Bible and read it and uh, discovered these things. So t tell, tell the viewers a little bit more about you know where you're at now and, and uh, your interaction with people at the church. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so are you on a cable connection, DSL, or what are you on? Yeah, I'm on a cable connection. But my, my laptop just is acting up today. Okay. All right. Well, t tell us about sitting down with, the, with the, the pastor again and the people at the church. Okay. Well, the second time, well, first I brought it to, to the pastor first because um, I just felt like I need to tell him first. He was my husband and my like really close friend. He he's always counseled us. Um, he was just not only our pastor but our, our really good friend. So we just I really wanted to share him what the father was telling me to see what he thought because you know you always look up to your pastor. They they they're the ones that teach you. And if I had anything to do with the Bible, I wanted to see like did he see this too and what he thought. And uh, it ended up getting into this debate, and it just, it ended badly. I felt like, okay, he's got me. Like, he's got me, but I know that it's, it's still not, that there's still something missing. Because I didn't have all the scriptures to just pull out of my belt, you know. Like, and, and so that's why I referred him to you, because I just, like, I felt defeated the second time. I felt like, like it's not what I want. I don't want to debate. I just want him to see what the father's telling me and to show him what what I'm seeing and see like and it just it just wasn't happening and I felt like okay it's not going well I'll just give it some time and I'll just pray for the father to open up his and discuss this you know instead of debating or arguing and just throwing scriptures at each other and so I I, I informed him about you and uh, you know your your video unwilling to debate, and I felt like okay, you're more prepared. Okay, yeah, I can hear hear you kind of now. Okay. So is, is I guess it's your laptop that's giving you problems, huh? Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. Well. Um, Anyway, so do me a favor. Just wrap up with um, yeah. what if you could say anything to your former friends, you know, the friends you've had at the church and to David and, and to others, you know, who may be watching this video, what would you say to them? I would say, um, I love you guys. I just, I didn't change. The Father just told me the truth. And I just want to ask that if you ever cared about me at all that you would open up the beginning of the book and just pray for the Father to open your eyes you know if I was willing to give up everything for this truth um, you should check into it it's very powerful and I, I definitely agree a lot of us um have dealt with the things you've dealt with when it comes to family and friends and uh, you know our Messiah said it very clearly that he does not come to bring peace but a sword, and he divides, and uh, this is kind of what happens, because uh, the Torah, you know, the Father's instructions does not fill megachurches. And so uh, because it doesn't fill megachurches, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And so, uh, Sarah, I want to thank you very much for coming on here and um, giving your story, and especially at that last part, you know, where... Just open the Bible and read it. Open your Torah. Open the beginning of the book and read it and go from there and see what his instructions are and understand that our Father does not change. He doesn't change.